in a, in a, in a two meters in a hundred years. Okay. Okay. And the rise now is less than thirty centimeters in a hundred years. So two meters in a hundred. But it might have been half a meter in ten years. See, you see, uh, the record back there is not fine enough to tell when it's deep. As you as you go further back, you, here here you got a satellite and you say, okay, this year it rose this much, and then it rose this much. Well, back there you, you're using um, you're using ice core records, you're using uh, deep sea records, you're using different things like that. So to, to tell what the to tell what the sea level is. So it's a it's a proxy record. And that's just from like displacement in the water of large chunks of ice. No, what happens is what happens is that um, the Greenland ice sheet is a big dome of ice. And then there's outlet layers that come down. And it's really pronounced on the east side, big deep fjords. Well there's fjords on the west side too, but you can't see them as much because they're full of ice. And so those so those ice and those fjords, those are the outlet places, yeah. and they're flowing to the sea. And then there's a floating, a little floating tongue that's already in the water. And so basically, the ice, the ice is this part is sort of floating and supported, and then it goes down and meets the and meets the ground down here. And so what happens is, if, if it partially sinks the Titanic, a little bit breaks off, and the ice floats out into the. the Titanic runs into it and sinks. Well, what's been happening in West Greenland is the whole front has been carving all at once. And it's gone back, uh, I can't remember, it's uh, thousands and thousands of feet in the last 10 years. And just, there are videos on YouTube now, and there's a movie called Chasing Ice. Uh, and basically, they show the car. What happens when a car? All right. So there's a, all that ice that's holding back the outlet, which is holding back, which is up there in the ice sheet. And it's quite an ice grid. It's pretty steep. So if you, it's like pulling the cork out of the bottle from that front car, and then the other part surges over and carves faster. And so that, so when that ice gets in the water, then that makes sea level rise. But what they're afraid is going to happen is it will carve so fast that then there'll be a, a rapid downdraw of the ice sheet itself, and the ice will move very fast towards the towards the ocean. When it moves very fast towards the ocean and there's a downdraw, that's the meltwater. And so then the, then, the, then the sea level leaps upwards because it's so much ice coming from the Greenland ice sheet. Is that is that could that cause a tsunami? I, I heard that there no. was there was something with the Greenland ice sheet melting that could. No. 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 <laughs> no. They can't. It can't do that. It's a it's a tsunami like effect when it carves. If you're oh, it's a tsunami like right effect. If you're right there at the ice front, that happens in the that happens in the places that end in the seawater in Alaska. If they carve. I, I, we were in a. Um, we were in a zodiac, a small zodiac, in front of one of those, and it carved off a big chunk of iceberg. And we could see this wave, about six or eight feet tall, coming down the fjord at us. And it was a breaking wave, and it was gradually getting smaller and smaller. And by the time it reached us, we just went up and down. So, <laughs> so at least we don't have that to worry. So anyway, but yeah, so that so that's the problem is. So what we call it, we like to call it, is to pull the cork out of the bottle and then the down draw happens. And that's what happens, I think that's what happened with the meltwater falls with the, with the Laurentide ice sheet, which is the main ice that was here. And that was up around in Baffin Bay, and so it down drew into Baffin Bay and, and uh, caused a rapid rate of sea level. So that's and what would that mean? Uh, I mean, it seems like it's pretty rapid now. Uh, what would that mean in terms of compared to what we're seeing now? Well, okay, the rate of sea level rise, sea level change, is all relative. It's relative sea level change. And the Mississippi Delta today is one meter per hundred years. So that's so that's a that's a centimeter per year. Yeah. 
that much. So if it was one meter in ten years, you could practically go down there and each high tide would come up with one So that's what a meltwater pulse is. But it still wouldn't do it overnight. It wouldn't be a tsunami type, a tsunami type thing. But nobody, but the detail. So there's some, there's enough detail as the science emerges. It's not the science that I do. It's the science, science that the ice sheet people do that is emerging to suggest that some of these down draws happen over a, just a 10-year period. And so it's, Little, little bumps and so instead of going off like that, it goes like that. Mm. And that's, that's work that's ongoing now and that gets a little more refined each time. So that's that story. Oh, that's good. But that's, a, it, but that's, you're welcome. It's, it's interesting to a geologist. I think it's very interesting to me. Um, you think that it might be, be more of a, of a universal pattern in, in natural phenomena because they, they used to think their evolution happened at sort of just a constant rate, but now they see yeah. punctuated equilibrium. Yeah, that would, be, like, that would be a good analogy. That would be a good analogy. And see, we're not helping it out by, by contributing to global warming, and so we're melting the ice. And so what happens, what's happening in Greenland is that the ice is basically the, well, the Greenland ice in the made up main ice sheet is what's called uh, coal base and coal. And they're frozen to the bed. Well, in the, in the, as you come down towards the outlet glaciers, they're polythermal. And that means that they melt on the top in the summertime, but they're still pretty, not quite frozen to the bed, but pretty close. So they melt on the top in the summertime and then they freeze up again. So that's what polythermal is. Warm base is if the water goes all the way down to the base of the ice. And then it does two things. It makes it warmer down there so it melts all the way up. And it also uh, it also lubricates the base of the ice so it flows faster. And so that's been happening on the outlet glaciers in Greenland at least since 1988. Because there's a picture in, on a couple of science taken in, this, in the 2002 issue. Of the no, it was later on, but the picture was, you know, it was 2002. And then the picture was actually taken in 1988. People didn't realize what was happening in 2002 when it shows the water going down a new limb. Trench for it for a big hole in there. Uh, and you've seen on the popular press, the guys. Uh, Going down in those things, yeah. that's the craziest thing you can do. That's a death row. Go down in the and you end up in the bottom of the, bottom of the ice. <laughs> but anyway, so so that was not well understood that Greenland was doing that. And it's doing that. So it still melts on the top, and those rivers run along the top, but all of a sudden they disappear down in the ice. And that's, and that's the real scary part for climate change because everything's lubricating it'll make the carving go faster and so the guy that i heard talk up in uh Bret woods is a is a lead author for sea level rise for ice dynamics and he said he's really having a hard time understanding carving glacier dynamics so it's because it's so um, it doesn't follow. It doesn't follow the rules. It doesn't kind of follow the right rules of physics. Like so, and so they need to do that to see where they are and which curve. And so the new IPCC that's coming out, 2015, it's going to be on the up end of the upside of the 2001, way above the 2007, and maybe a little higher. So they're having a discussion about that now. <laughs> So it's that blue line that I had on there, and, and uh, we're following the red line, which is the intermediate line of the guys that are really up there. Do, do you think it's it's time for agencies like CRMC to start adjusting, even though they used to have the high mark, start adjusting that up to two meters? No, no, I think no. The, uh, the, uh, the five feet is three to five feet is fine. 
They, they have it, but see, it doesn't have the force of regulation. So it's just a, it's just a finding and a guide to follow. But regulation, if you had a regulation, you would say, okay, if you're going to build a house, and the house is going to be there by X number of however many years, you have to elevate your house to be above the, have to add, add the sea level rise component into the FEMA flood, flood map zone, and they don't do that. And so, and one of the things they're running into, and this is particularly true in Charleston, the FEMA regulations now, uh, you're actually going to get a reduction in your flood insurance if you elevate your house above where you need to. If you have, you got to have one foot of free water and two feet of free water, the flood insurance goes down. The problem is, if you're in a if you're in a flood zone in a B zone where it's where um, it's already pretty high and you elevate that high and you house is only allowed to be 35 feet above ground level and half of that's pilot you don't get much of a house and it's so that so there needs to be a change in that regulation to say okay the height is 35 feet of house not not counting the pilots, and so there's resistance to that, and that all gets into, well, he put his house way up on pilings, and I'm back here on the back of the beach, and I can't see the ocean. Yeah, that, that's where the politics comes in. Yeah.